The land down under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline, so you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. Monday Matinee. Your weekly series of live plays, classic drama and comedy, and a variety of audio drama from the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone listening under the age of 17. Welcome to the Sonic Society, episode 601. We are the world's greatest showcase of modern audio theater. I'm Jack Ward, who's getting an itchy foot and wishing I could go traveling with my audio life mate, David Alt. <laughs> Good morning, Jack. Are you truly in the mood for an adventure, or is this something to do with today's feature? Right you are, David. For today, we get to listen to Whisper Forge's Caravan ah. with their first two episodes, Riders in the Sky and On the Road Again. Yes, and a brief reminder that Caravan is rated R for... a a plethora of reasons, so be prepared for adult contents just like it is when Jack's on the road. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> never know what you come across when you're a wandering. Indeed not, and so today's features begin right here on the Sonic Society. A product of the Whisper Forge. Sound and story brought to life. Before we jump in, a note on our content. Caravan is created for adult audiences only. We advise listener and reader discretion for graphic depictions of violence, frank portrayal of sexuality, discussion of mental illness and existential struggle, and some downright filthy language. It gets mighty dangerous in the canyon, but if you need a breather, we've got your back. Whenever you're feeling ready and able, we hope you'll join us. Dude, don't. Come on. Please. Why not? You said we're supposed to let loose. Somebody will hear us. There's literally no one here for miles. Okay, you don't know that. Plus, it's a big canyon. It'll definitely echo. You're no fun. Fine, you go first. Ha! <laughs> Going first is easy. You gotta talk to me then. Ready? As I'll ever be. Penis. Oh, that was weak. I'm just setting the bar low for you. Samir, your turn. <clears throat> Penis. Penis! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. shit. Classic, Carlisle. I told him we should take a trip. It's been too long, and of course his idea of a vacation is shouting into a canyon. <sighs> Still, he brings out the kid in me, and I love him for that. You weren't supposed to do it that loud. Who cares? We haven't seen civilization in hours. It doesn't mean that there aren't people out here. This is a big canyon. Freakishly big, right? Damn, I wish I'd come here sooner. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I could definitely do without the creepy crawlies out here, though. You're in the great outdoors. Just like the first men. Before they decided, they'd rather build the great indoors. Return into nature. You've, you've seriously never been on a camping trip before? Can't say I have. I asked my mom once if I could go to summer camp, and she said I could just sleep in the garage, not shower, and eat bugs if I wanted the full experience of it, you know? You, you're telling me you trade this view for a garage? Not for anything. L least of all my garage. Um, thanks for coming with me. 
I I wouldn't want to get lost out here alone. Oh yeah, it's steep as fuck out here. I think I nearly died like four times on the trail. It is rocky, all right. Beautiful though. It's getting dark. We should set up camp. Woo wee! It smells like rain coming. Yeah, we better hurry. How can you do that? I don't smell anything. This place is just a giant dust bowl for people with terrible allergies like me. We spend the next half hour setting up camp. I carry all the snacks and water, so I don't have as much to do. Carlisle's much bigger and stronger, so he's carrying all our tent and bedding. And every now and then I help him prop up a pole, but for the most part, I just watch him work. Jesus, you look like a modern Davy Crockett. (laughs) What makes you say that? (laughs) I don't know, you just look so at ease in all this. It's very American frontier of you. Well, I was an Eagle Scout after all. Of course you were. Hey, we, what do you mean? I'm proud of it. No, it's fine. It's cool. It just makes sense. You know, you, you look like you belong here. That's all. And you don't? Well, I'm brown, for starters. You know my people don't really hike. Huh. Yeah, I guess. Uh, how come? Gee, I don't know, maybe because civilization is dangerous enough that we don't feel like wandering out into the wilderness as much? Isn't it nice to get away from people sometimes? Eh, I don't know. Like what, get caught out here all alone with a park ranger who doesn't even like you and then bad things happen? I mean, what are the odds of that happening, though? Couldn't tell you. I mean, how many of us go missing every year without cops giving a shit? Okay, fair enough. Sorry. Didn't mean to bring it up. It's fine. Thanks for saying I look like your all-American white dude, I guess. Lyle, it was a compliment. I know. And I guess I don't really know what your experience is with it. I'm I'm sorry, Sammy. Look, I'm just saying that brown and black folks staying the hell away from hiking trails is a whole thing. You know, look it up. Do you ever see us walking into haunted houses in horror movies or trailing Bigfoot or chasing UFOs? No, no, no. We say no thanks and keep on driving. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're doing this with me. I am too. Good save, by the way. Now get in here. You don't have to tell me twice. really coming down. Yeah, seriously. Also, it's a little tight in here, right? Sorry. Thought we'd have more room for (laughs) two in here. I don't mind. I didn't realize I got rainstorms out here. It's unusual for sure. They must be rare. I'm really glad we did this. Uh, Have I already said that? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, but me too. Work's been really crazy, and and I know we haven't seen each other as much as we should, so... I know. So, uh, yeah, I am... Lyle? Are you okay? Yeah, um, look, uh, like I said, we don't see each other much, so there's never really a good time to talk about things, you know, and, and, uh... Well, what do you want to talk about? Well, I I was gonna (laughs) wait till after the trip, but this is as good a time as any. (laughs) I've never seen Carlisle this nervous. I have to admit, we've been best friends all our lives, but squeezed up next to each other in this tent is pretty intimate, even for me. 
But there's no way he's going to say what I think he's going to say. You're my best friend. You know that, right? Yeah, I'm so happy to be. And you're mine too. And, uh, well, we've been through pretty much everything together. I mean, you've seen me at my best and at my worst. Sounds like he's been practicing a speech or something. Whatever he wants to tell me, it's huge, but it can't be. And, uh, well, I love you, man. You're like one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Uh, And you're one of the best things in my life, too. And I, I just want to make sure you're in my life, even though we're grown-ups now and, and laugh is hectic and always yanking us in different directions and, and uh... Oh my god, this can't be real. This is it. He, he, he's saying everything I've always felt for him. So I guess what I'm, I'm trying to say is I really want you to be in my life for the long haul. For, for all the good. And like, all the bad. I want that too, Carlisle. So, that's... That's why I'm uh, I'm just gonna stop running around the bush and say it. Uh, Okay. Samir. Will you... Fuck. (laughs) Will you... Be my... Best man. What the fuck? Uh, no, wait, I, I can't say that. Um, what? I, I want you to be my best man. I, I, I know I've got my brother, and it's, it's kind of just assumed your brother's going to be your best man, but it's, it's you, man. I want you. As your best man? Yeah. Uh, things have really been getting serious with me and Cammy, and... and I was beating myself up over whether or not I should go forward with it, but then I said to myself, I just gotta fucking man up and do it. So so I took her out to where we met, and man, I proposed to her. She's just before coming on the trip. You proposed to Camilla? It's crazy, right? She must be, um, really special. I thought I'd kind of get to hang out with her more before something like this, you know? It's a little sudden, I know. It's more that, I don't know, you've met every girl and guy I've dated and you always gave me the thumbs up or told me to watch out for all the red flags you'd catch way before I did. You think cami has got red flags? I'm, I'm saying you haven't even let me get to know her enough to see. Sorry, I, I didn't think it was a requirement. It's not, um... I guess I just thought it'd be like a a rite of passage or something. You know, a thing that we'd both do for each other... as friends. I love her, man. I mean, I, I do. I know. And I don't doubt that for a second. I just don't know what you love about her. I couldn't even name three things she likes. I have no idea what you guys have in common. Well, we're really compatible. Okay, like, in what? Hobbies? You know. Physically. Okay, she's great in the sack. Yippee. But don't you think marriage might require more than that? Sure, but, man, the minute I saw her, the chemistry, it was just... It was, it was there, you know? Like, like lightning. <sighs> totally. It's kind of like when I saw... My... Ex... But that feeling goes away with time is all. Maybe, but I, I've never been sure about this. Like, like, don't you ever just get a feeling in your gut that, that tells you that, that you just know you're right? I, I mean, I, I look at her and I can see... I, I can picture waking up with her and raising kids together and, and building a home together, you know? H- haven't you ever felt like that for someone and just known you were meant to be together? Uh, I guess not. Straight people are a mystery to me, I guess. Oh, and I take it that she said yes? She said yes. Yeah, she... We haven't planned anything. It's it's 
all really new for both of us, but, but I've been thinking about this whole trip, and I just, I really want you to be a part of it. Like, like a big part. I mean, you'll be, you'll be my best man, right? Um, yeah. Of course. Yeah, congratulations. That's, you know, so... Awesome. I fumble through the blackness of the tent and our squished bodies to wrap him in a semi-hug. You're, you're happy, right? Of course. I, why wouldn't I be? All right, if you're sure. I, man, I'm so glad to do it. I, I love you so much, man. Yep. I love you too, bud. It's quiet for a little too long. We're looking at each other a little too long. Even in the dark, I can feel his eyes just burning into me. I snake my arm up between us and give him a light little punch. I missed you, buddy. Me too. A flash of lightning. A peal of thunder. The whole canyon alight. A ghostly white hand plunging into the golden valley below. It leaves an afterimage in my eyes long after the canyon returns to impenetrable darkness punctuated only by drops of rain that catch the smallest glints of moonlight. I don't even notice myself shivering. You all right? Yeah, I uh, I think I need some air. Uh, where? You, you gonna go out in the storm? Don't worry, I love the rain. Always have. Sammy. Yep, excuse me. Dude, be careful. Uh, yep, excuse me. Okay, if you could just... Yep. Um, okay, yeah, right there. Okay. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Fuck. It's raining. I mean, I knew that, but it's really raining. I can barely keep my eyes open. I can't see anything even when they are open. I I take a few steps away from the tent into the opaque night. We put up our camp only a few yards away from the edge of a steep cliff. I have to be careful not to step out too far or I could fall. But I also just had to get away from there. What the hell is wrong with me? Okay, call me crazy, but was I reading this whole situation completely wrong? Everything down to us getting squished into a tent in the wilderness felt very... I, I don't know, broke back mountain to me? <sighs> but whatever. It's fine. My best friend's getting married. To some lady he's known for just a few months... Fuck me, his best friend that he's known his whole life, right? Okay. Don't make an idiot of yourself. He can already tell I'm being pissy. And God, he's being so nice about it. Uh, if he could just stop being the literal perfect man all the goddamn time, it'd be easier to let myself just get angry with him. I'm shivering a lot now. I don't even know what I came out here to do or see. I should just get back inside. But I turn around and... I don't even see the tent anymore. That's impossible, right? I, I can't have moved more than ten steps away from it. It's It's gotta be right here, in, in the dark, r right in front of me, right? I take a few steps forward. I lurch forward and swing my arms around. They don't catch on the tent or anything else. Oh, I feel clothes getting heavy with water. I feel like I'm going to drown in the open air. Oh god, I'm lost. I'm really fucking lost. I'm ten seconds away from a full-blown panic attack when I hear Lyle shouting behind me. Sammy, are you mad at me? No, I'm so happy for you. I turn around to face him. He's drenched too. He must have followed me a ways out. I am. I wish my body was better at conveying that. 
you know, sometimes it feels like I'm just talking through a screen. It dampens everything that comes out. I am happy for you. I'm just always going to seem a little sad about things. You weren't always sad. I can't remember the last time I wasn't even a little sad. I do. When you're excited or proud of something, it, it shows. And when's that? He grins. God, his teeth are so white, I can even see here in the dark in the pouring rain. Like when you're with me. Dick. You done uh, getting that fresh air? Yeah, I... And that's when I stop dead. Mid-sentence. That's when I see something I can't possibly be seeing. The kind of thing people only say they saw when they're miles away from civilization in the middle of nowhere and tired and alone and hungry and delirious. I see a giant ghostly train of visions barreling across the night sky through the storm. There's bulls and horses and wagons and riders swinging whips and guns and all of them a spectral white. They fly through the horizon, unburdened by the canyon below. Carlisle? Are, are you seeing this? I'm suddenly breathless. Every word takes all my will to form into sounds. I can't tell if he can even hear me anymore. He seems so far away even though he's just in front of me. At least I think he is. I'm not, I'm not even looking at him anymore. I can't stop staring at the beautiful, terrifying caravan riding through the sky. Samir, look, look out, the ledge! Uh, whoa, whoa. And I slip. I guess. And I fall into the vast and bottomless canyon below. Samir? Caravan was created by me, Toba Zaman, and produced by Misha Stanton and me. This episode was written and directed by yours truly, with performances by Sushant Adlaka as Samir, and Brigham Snow as Carlisle. Sound design by Misha Stanton and Ana Rodriguez. Our theme music is by Evan Cunningham. Additional music by Misha Stanton. Our home on the web is whisperforge.org slash caravan, where we'll have transcripts for each episode, links to subscribe to the show wherever you like to listen, and ways to review us on your listening app of choice. You can also email us at caravan at whisperforge.org, or find us on social media at Caravan Radio. And if you'd like to help the caravan resupply, you can visit our Patreon page, patreon.com slash caravan radio. Thanks for riding with us. Y'all come back soon now. A product of the Whisper Forge. Sound and story brought to life. Before we jump in, a note on our content. Caravan is created for adult audiences only. We advise listener and reader discretion for graphic depictions of violence, frank portrayal of sexuality, discussion of mental illness and existential struggle, and some downright filthy language. It gets mighty dangerous in the canyon, but if you need a breather, we've got your back. Whenever you're feeling ready and able, we hope you'll join us. I know that I'm dreaming. Of that much I'm certain. But damn, everything feels so real. I can feel the ground under my feet. Seems like it's paved with broken bones. They creak as my feet move on them. And the air smells like wet stone, like a cave or something. And I can feel the heat of a bright green flame in front of me coming out from a brazier at eye level. It just barely lights up the scene around me. On the other side of the flame stands a man, 
but I don't even know if I can call him that. He's huge, like eight feet tall. And even in the light of the green flame, I can tell his skin is a dark blood red. He's got huge long eyebrows that extend past his face in long arches, and two devil horns protruding from a mat of slick black hair. And okay, I'll admit it, he's pretty sexy. But I'm definitely dreaming. The tall devil guy is staring into the flame. It seems like he doesn't notice me. I can't make out whatever he sees in the fire, but it seems like it's upsetting him. His face twists into a snarl and then suddenly he snaps upright. His voice bellows. Virgil! Virgil, get in here! A few seconds pass before a second green flame appears almost right next to me. I jump away, startled. But the devil guy doesn't seem to notice this either. It's huge, basically my height. The sudden massive gout of flame warms on my face and then, a second later, the flames die down. But a man is standing there, in a fine tailored suit and tie and spectacles. It doesn't seem like he notices me either. The suited man bows reverently before the devil. I await my master's command. Virgil, what took you so long? My sincerest apologies. I was busy putting some of your minions in their place. Their insolence cannot be tolerated. You have to bring them a heel, Virgil. The daddy has submitted a formal complaint. The daddy? Uh, forgive me, the D-A-D-I? Oh, all these acronyms. Which one is that again? The Demonic Advisory for Diversity and Inclusion. Right, right, those weeny bastards. What do they want now? As I was saying, Daddy submitted a formal complaint that the canyon has inherently racist policies against all non-red demons in your legions. I cannot help that the majority of us are red! I can just get over it! I did delicately try to tell them that they should, but by and large, Get over it is rarely received well in discourse surrounding infernal justice. All demons of any color have equal opportunity in my canyon. Hell, you're not raiding, you're my right-hand man. I am aware of my own color, Master. And yet your subjects see me as the exception, not the well, rule. Well, what makes you the exception? Anyone who works hard can be in the inner circle. Precisely. And while well, my... Being enslaved into your employ by a magical contract seems to contradict that premise. Do I sense resentment, Virgil? Not at all, my liege. Then what makes you so different from my ungrateful hordes? Isn't it obvious? I exist solely to serve you. Doesn't sound like you're thrilled to be my servant. Naturally, it breaks my heart to bring upsetting news. But I walk a delicate line by still awakening you to the truth that you trust me to bring to your attention. Slippery tongue, as always. I've always understood that you're rather fond of my tongue. Quiet bitch. I have business to discuss. Certainly. How may I assist you? Look into the scrying flame, Virgil. What is the meaning of this? A rainstorm in my canyon? Surely nothing in the canyon, not even a raindrop, happens without your command, Master. I didn't ask for this. And the minions are talking about a vision? They say they saw a white caravan flying through the sky. How convenient. The first rain in nearly a decade and people are having visions. I wouldn't think much of it, Master. No, but what if it's true? My liege, what if what is true? A story they made up about a jolly caravan jaunting around the sky? Finally here to deliver them to paradise? They can keep waiting for all I care. Of course it isn't real, but that doesn't change the fact that people think it is. The opinions of ants needed to concern you, Master. If people start believing in the caravan, they'll start believing they can leave my canyon. The seal to the outside world is airtight, my liege. Let any imaginary caravan batter itself against the veil. I sustain it with my own power. And when that runs out? With respect, you forget I am a being made of pure power. It doesn't run out. Don't get fresh with me. 
There are mechanisms to undo you. So you say. But only the very mechanisms made for killing gods. And when they learn those methods? When? If. The power in the Book of Hours can't be wielded by mortals. It's said they'll go blind or something if they so much as open it. Your assurances come at the promise of your head, Virgil. Do not deceive me. I mean only that you've nothing to fear. The canyon gets its hopes up, and then what? Nothing. No one's coming to save them. Despair retakes their spirits, the engine keeps running, your hold over the Legion is secure. I assure you. Events like these... Events that inspire feelings as insipid as... hope. They're troublesome. They tempt people to step out of line. And who better than I to punish them when they do? I'm trusting you on this, Virgil. Never has your trust been better placed. Anything else, my lord of hell? I need some air. I'm going upside. What are, uh, what are you doing after this? <sighs> I have a dog to walk. You're so mean to that poor thing. Well, I never asked for it. Oh, give him to me. He's so cute. Absolutely not. Oh, why not? He's a handful, that's all. Your time is better spent on leisure, my liege. Oh, you're going to give him up sooner or later. I just know it. All right, I'm gonna go see what I can do about this god-awful humidity. It is truly a bane upon us. There is nothing our kind hate more than humidity. I look forward to your deliverance. Later, slots. Every time one of the portals opens or closes, the air gets thick with the smell of smoke and brimstone. I can't hold a cough in, and mm, I accidentally let one out. Virgil's head snaps right in my direction. Ah, oh, shit. He can see me. Oh... Can he? I can't tell. The suited man takes a step closer to me, but it's like he's seeing through me. Behind me somehow. Uh... Hello? Can, can you see me? I ask out loud. No response. Virgil merely raises his palm toward me and moves it to the side, like pushing a sliding door. Suddenly I feel a giant chain tugging behind my belly button to an anchor somewhere far away. I'm yanked into wakefulness. Whoa there, partner. Good morning to you. I don't know what that guy did to me, but I felt like I got shot through a coffee store into another dimension. I open my eyes and the sunlight burns through them right away. I'm damp from the rain, but it's not raining now. The sun is blinding, and I squint to try and block it out. But then the shape of a head in a cowboy hat blocks it out casting my face in shade. Who the hell are you? I'm a regular around these parts. Seriously, I never heard of me? You wound me. I squint some more. My eyes adjust to the shade and I can start to make out some features from the person in front of me. Dark skin, thick bushy eyebrows, and deep set piercing brown eyes. The faintest five o'clock shadow lines a lean angular face. A single droplet of sweat gathers at the point of a long, flat nose. <sighs> Holy shit. This might be the most beautiful person I've ever seen. Um, no, sorry, I can't say I'm familiar. You do look an awful lot like some old-timey movie star out of a western, though. He squints back at me in return. Oh, did I say something wrong? Mama. Movie, huh? Movies. Movie. I like that. Been a while since I heard that. So, are you a model or something? <laughs> nah, kid. Nothing like that. Other uh, than why are you dressed up as a cowboy? 
Someone once told me you should dress for the job you want, not the job you got. Fair enough. So, what's your name, wannabe cowboy? I'm Argo. Delighted to make your acquaintance. He tips his hat down to me. Dang, talk about old school cool. (laughs) I'm Samir. You can call me Sammy for short. Now why on earth would I do that? Um, because my friends do? Samir. I like it. Sounds, uh, regal. Can I still call you that and be your friend? Yeah, sure. I start trying to sit up and I feel a shooting pain down my back. Ah, uh, fuck. Whoa, <sighs> language. No, I'm serious. It really fucking hurts. I forgot I took a huge fall to get down here. Did you take a tumble down here, partner? No, I just felt like taking a leisurely nap in the middle of a canyon trail. Well, pardon me. I missed the memo we were wearing our sassy pants today. Here, let me help you up. He struggles for a bit trying to help me sit up, and I keep collapsing in pain every time I have to support my own neck off the ground. Oh, shit. Am I paralyzed or something? You're pretty hurt, my friend. Allow me to carry you to safety. Whoa. Trust me, I am more than okay with this. I'll go smells of leather and musk and tobacco. He has no trouble carrying my tubby ass. Argo probably lifts more than Carlisle. Oh shit, Carlisle. Say, uh, I got separated from my friend when I fell. I should go look for him. Oh? Well, good thing you weren't traveling alone. Why is that? Canyon gets mighty dangerous at night. He could be hurt too. I gotta find him. You fell from, uh, just up there, you reckon? Yeah, I think so. I fell pretty far, but that's the only cliff I can see. We had a tent just a few yards away from the edge. Well, I got good news and bad news for you, friend. Oh, bad news first, always. The bad news is, ain't no easy way to get back up there. What? Look at how steep that drop is. We'd have to go searching for a ramp up to that height, and there isn't one for miles and miles. And I'm no rock climber. Then, what the hell is the good news? If your friend didn't fall down here too, then he's probably safe up there. You see, that cliff is kind of like... Uh, an unmarked boundary of sorts. Down here, this is where the real canyon begins. All those trails up there are really just for tourists. They don't get to see much of the real canyon. And this boundary is determined by level of danger? It's dangerous down here too, that's true. If you're alone. Which you were. As were you. As was I. But now we aren't. Now you're in my caravan. Welcome! Welcome to your caravan of... one person? You do wound me again, partner. This is no caravan of one person. You can't have a caravan with one person. We are, in fact, two people. Sure we are. What a huge caravan. Just the two of us. The sun at your back, the friend at your side, the country road winding out before you. What else could a person need? I take it you don't get out of the canyon much. Hardly any of us do. Us? There are other people who just live in here year-round? Of course. Huh. I always thought the canyon was a tourist thing. I didn't realize people actually lived here. This must be primo real estate. Beautiful views all the time. Seriously. I think I might faint in this heat, though. It's not the heat. It's the humidity. Yeah, that wild rainstorm from last night. Unexpected, to be sure. We don't get those down here. Look like someone had a whole light show ready to go, though. Hmm? Light show? Uh, yeah, you know, when you project a lot of lights. I've heard of this. Like a... a movie. Like a movie. Yeah. Someone had this light show going during the storm. It was like the Oregon Trail or something. A whole bunch of wagons and riders traveling over the sky. Well, uh, ah, darn. I- I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you all right? Ow, I know I'm heavy, but maybe you could tell me before you're going to drop me. You said you saw wagons projected in the sky like a m- m- movie? Yeah, but like super low quality. They were kind of see-through, probably because of the rain. 
it must have projected onto the fog or something. Uh, a bunch of white wagons and the horses and bulls and... You saw it too, then? The wild caravan? Um, is that the name of your light show or something? I wasn't just imagining it. You saw it too, an outsider. It was hella distracting. I got caught watching in the rain and then slipped. Argo's eyes narrow at me. He's looking at me like just running into an old friend. His lips widen into a slow, incredulous smile. My friend, you took a fateful fall indeed. Yeah, because you dropped me. No, not that. I mean from the cliff. You're here now, in the canyon, in my caravan. Uh, yeah, for, for the time being. You're going to help me find my friend and get out of here, right? Argo kneels next to me, shoulders square and resolute like a knight. He solemnly takes his hat off and puts it to his breast. Samir, my fellow caravaner, yes, I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going to get us all out of here. Just you wait. He says it with so much pride, like he's been waiting his whole life or something. Cool. Can't wait. So, uh, you gonna carry me all the way up there? Of course not. No caravan is complete without its trusted steed. And we have the most blessed steed of all. I can't wait for you to meet her. Come on, just a little bit further. So, what makes her so cool? Do we have, like, a cool-ass horse or something? A horse? <laughs> My friend, did I not say we have the most blessed steed of all? Uh, okay. The Pope's horse? I'm, I'm really not an equestrian. What makes a good-ass mount? We have been blessed with a unicorn. You know unicorns aren't real, right? This one is. Look! Just around this corner, and there, just a few yards ahead, isn't she beautiful? I turn my head to look at what looks to be a really sad donkey. Like a really, really sad donkey. I think Eeyore would look like a ray of sunshine next to this poor thing. Uh, Argo, um, can I be real with you for a sec? Of course. Speak plainly, partner. So, I think we have different definitions of what constitutes a unicorn. To most people, a unicorn is a horse with a horn on its head. It's a magical creature. <gasps> you are absolutely correct. My apologies. Oh, the indignity of not having a horn. My poor Betsy here must be humiliated in her current state. Not to worry, Betsy, I will horn you a nun. Argo picks up our pace and lays me down a few paces away from Betsy, the really sad donkey. Behind Betsy, a ramshackle wagon leans against a rock wall. Argo runs to the wagon and disappears into it. After a minute of rummaging, Argo reemerges with something in his hand, and he approaches Betsy. Now, now, my beloved steed, I'm so sorry, truly. But here, a horn finally befitting your stature. Argo puts a party hat on her head. Like one of those cheap paper cone shaped party hats from kids' birthday parties? Uh, why the fuck did he stock that in the wagon? I mean, at the very least, Betsy does look a bit happier. Uh, a bit happier. Our unicorn is assembled. Our caravan is complete. My dear new friend, perhaps you can point me in the way you saw this wild caravan. Oh, but aren't you going to take me back up to my tent? Of course, of course. I promise I'm going to get us all out of here, didn't I? Here, let me put you at the front of the wagon and navigate. There you go. Comfortable? Uh, all right. I think it was some way that way. We haven't a moment to lose. Betsy, onward to the wild caravan. And so, here I am. Had a freaky dream, met a super sexy cowboy, and his... unicorn. Which is really just a depressed donkey in a party hat. And slowly, together, we're gonna find our way out of here. As a... caravan.
Duck your head! What the fuck? Caravan was created by me, Toa Zaman, and produced by Misha Stanton and me. This episode was written and directed by yours truly, with performances by Sushant Adlaka as Samir, Giancarlo Herrera as Argo, Josh Rubino as Ball, and me, I guess, as Virgil. Sound design by Misha Stanton and Ana Rodriguez. Our theme music is by Evan Cunningham. Additional music by Misha Stanton. Our home on the web is whisperforge.org slash caravan, where we'll have transcripts for each episode, links to subscribe to the show wherever you like to listen, and ways to review us on your listening app of choice. You can also email us at caravan at whisperforge.org, or find us on social media at Caravan Radio. And if you'd like to help the caravan resupply, you can visit our Patreon page, patreon.com slash caravan radio. Thanks for riding with us. Y'all come back soon now. And that's this week's show. Please be sure to check the Sonic Society homepage at sonicsociety.org for upcoming news and episodes from the Sonic Society part of the Mutual Audio Network at mutualaudionetwork.com. Be sure to join us next Sunday as we take a look at a popular form of audio story. Multiple takes on audio fiction. And until then, I'm David Alt. And I'm Jack Ward. Have a pleasant day. Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. And that's this week's show. Please Hang on, sh- no, no, it's your name, David. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Is it, is it, is it, Jack? Is it? <laughs> I only wish, <laughs> if only. from. Some say he's not a man. Some say he's a force. Not of nature, but of something more primal than that. He's the acid taste of vengeance you can't quite swallow down in a town that's besieged by fear an unbreathed regret. Others say he was a man who wouldn't rest until all the pain in the world was fed back to those who minded out of others. He's only known by one name, from county to county, in the hours past dawn, and in the haze-filled air, you'll see him walking towards you if you keep secrets, if you harm folks. He's the drifter, and he won't stop till sorrow's end. A weird western series from Jeffrey Billard starring The Drifter. From Audio Groove Cats and the Amigo Collective, coming 2023. Only on Mutual, with Episode 1, Before a Wind. <laughs>